how does the energy enhancement system technology actually work? What is it? What's the science behind it? And is there a way to explain that science in a way where every single one of us can understand without being that high level quantum physicist using big words that the majority of human beings just don't get? The truth of the matter is, is me and probably most of you watching this, most of you in this room right now, we're all infants in that world because we don't know it. The more I came to learn it, the more I came to understand it, the simpler it became. If we want to explain something for people to understand, we have to explain it so an infant can understand as well in our infantry stages of understanding what this technology is. So before diving into the actual technology itself, there are five foundations, five main foundations that we have to understand and I'm going to make them real simple. The first foundation is the most important one. The first foundation has to do with the environment. So I'm going to write number one, environment. This is number one thing that we always have to remember. What is the difference between health and disease? A lot of people like making health very complex, making medical stuff extremely complex, and there are nuances and a lot of details and a lot of complexities to it. But there are certain rules that we can make things very simple when we understand them. Rule number one, you take on the environment that you're in. That's how it works. If you are in a sick environment, if you are in an incoherent environment with dirty electricity, with radiation, with pollution, with toxins, with pesticides in your food, all of that holds an energy. We call that a bioresonant field. And when you spend enough time in an environment, you sink to that bioresonant field. And when you sink to that bioresonant field, if it's a sick one, you will become sick. And if it's a balanced one, you will experience balance. Let me give you examples to understand that on a grounded level. If I were to hug you for long enough, our heartbeats would synchronize because we are sinking to a field together. What happens when women spend enough time together in the same room? <laughs> Their menstrual cycles synchronize and we know that one woman doesn't give it to the next. It's not contagious. So there's something else going on here, right? It's, it's laughable at this point because we know that you're not giving it from one woman to another. There is a bioresonant field that those women are sinking to. And that bioresonant field that they're sinking to is then allowing them to synchronize their expressions, in this case, of a menstrual cycle. Sickness and health works the same exact way. So when you experience sickness, what you're doing is tuning into a bioresonant field that's not productive for your health. And when you experience health, what you're doing is tuning into a bioresonant field that's balanced. That's number one. The environment that you're in dictates the level of how you experience the expression of your health. We'll go deeper into that in just a second, but this foundation is what everything is going to keep tying back to. Number two has to do with the law of conservation. The law of conservation is something that all of us learned in about sixth or seventh grade. Whether you remember it or not, it's the base of all science as we know it. And this law basically says that energy cannot be created or destroyed. If energy cannot be created or destroyed, that implies that there's no beginning or end. When there's something with no beginning or end, that's another way of saying infinite. We'll get back to that in just a second as well. The next three foundations have to do with cellular charge, pH, and oxygen levels. These three things are extremely interconnected because they're all expressing the same thing in a different way. And I'll explain what that means in just a second. Let's start with number one, cellular charge. What is health? Health starts within your cells. A high electrical charge within your cells leads you to experience health. A low electrical charge, a deficiency of electricity, and that charge within your cells leads to disease. So the goal is not to ask how do I stop being sick or how do I become healthy. Through this awareness it says how do I charge my cells? Because on the spectrum of cellular charge, 
in the units of millivolts, because that's how they measure them on an electrical charge within your cells, 70 to 90 millivolts is optimal. And anything going towards this way, specifically 20 and below, is where cancer resides. That's where you create an environment within your cells that allows for things like diseases, things like cancer, heart disease, depression, anxiety, all of those things come in. They're all in accordance and alignment with a low electrical charge within your cells. So we know that a low charge is disease and a high charge is health. Let's go to this one. pH stands for hydrogen potential, the potential of hyd hydrogen in your body. Hydrogen potential, or pH, we're just going to make it simple and call neutral 7. Anywhere below that is called acidic, and anywhere above that is called alkaline. Most of us know this. Acidic bodies render environments where diseases can flourish. More alkaline bodies render environments where diseases cannot flourish because it's bringing us back into our natural state. So low pH, disease, high pH, health. We're going to go to the last part, oxygen levels. There was a doctor named Dr. Otto Warburg in the 18 or 1900s, and he won the Nobel Prize for proving the following. He said, deprive a single cell of 35% of its oxygen for 48 hours, and that cell will turn cancerous. What that means is when you have an oxygen deficient environment, you give an environment for cancer and disease to flourish. When you have an oxygen-rich environment, you render an environment that disease cannot flourish and health is the only thing that's left. So instead of saying, how do I fight the cancer, now you can ask yourself, how do I just change the environment to make that thing impossible to live within me and flourish within me in the first place? Every single one of these things, cellular charge, pH, and oxygen levels, are three different engines expressing the same thing. If you don't know how to charge your cells, and you just focus on pH, a body with an alkaline pH will render charged cells in an oxygen-rich environment. If you don't know how to shift your pH and you just focus on oxygen levels, when you increase the oxygen content within your body, this will render a higher pH and a higher cellular charge. And if you don't know how to do this and you're just charging the cells, then what comes next is a high pH and a high oxygen level. All of them do the same thing, giving you three different engines, three different mediums to get to the same point. This technology, the energy enhancement system technology, one of its main components is intended to charge the cells. Because let's go back to foundation number one. The environment that you're in is the environment that you will sink to. If you're in an environment that is charged at 70 to 90 millivolts and you spend enough time in that environment, then your cells will start charging and sinking to that 70 to 90 millivolts and remain in their optimal charge. So those are your, are your five components, your environment, your law of conservation, energy cannot be created or destroyed, the cellular charge and its importance, the pH and its importance, and the oxygen levels and its importance. Now once we understand that, we're going to dive into number two, which is the law of conservation, to understand how this technology actually works. Again, the law of conservation states that energy cannot be created or destroyed. If energy cannot be created or destroyed, as we said, there is no beginning, there is no end, it is infinite. When Nikola Tesla figured that out, he was killed for it. Why? Because that can help a lot of people. And when you help a lot of people, you take power, money, and control away from certain people that benefit off of making sure that certain people and the masses remain dependent on them, even though they don't need to. The moment we understand how to tap into the implication of the law of conservation, meaning free, infinite energy, the world changes overnight for the better for us and for the worse for people at the top because they make money off of metering your use off of something that's free. So is there a way to tap into this field? And the answer is yes. 
this technology does that to help your body tap into its own ability to heal itself. Why do I stand behind this technology? Because this technology doesn't heal you. If anybody ever told me, you need this to heal you, I would never represent it. Because the truth is, your body has every single ability and tool to heal itself. The pharmaceutical industry wants you to think otherwise. They want you to sit there and say, you need us to be healthy, and you don't. They don't want you to know that you don't, but you don't. You have everything within yourself to be healthy. You have all the cures, all the solutions, and all the power to do that. The question is, how do we remember that once again? How do we become aware of that once again? So when it comes to this technology, it does not heal you. You heal you. It simply creates the environment, foundation one, to allow your body to sink to something, to give your body the ability to do what it does best, which is heal itself. Because as we said, if you cut yourself, you don't need to think about that cut healing. If you're asleep, if you're awake, if you're in a coma, that thing with the divine, intelligent energy that's moving through you will do whatever it can to heal itself. As a matter of fact, when you're sleeping, it heals itself quicker. Because instead of allocating energy to digestion and everything else that you do while you're awake, it allocates energy to come back into homeostasis. The natural state of all of our bodies is health. It's not disease. Disease is not natural. Disease is not just the way it is. It's what we've created because we've forgotten about these laws. The natural state of everything is health. We know that because of the law of conservation. So with the law of conservation, energy cannot be created or destroyed. What is this infinite field? What does it look like? And how can we tap into it? The infinite field <clears throat> is called a torsion field. And a torsion field is a field of energy that moves in all directions simultaneously with no beginning and no end. In other words, if you had to paint a picture of what infinity looks like from that realm, energetically speaking, that's what it looks like. It's your field with no beginning and no end. That is the law of conservation and its implications of energy cannot be created or destroyed in action. There's a movie called Thrive. Foster Gamble produced it with his wife, Kimberly. In 2012, it came out, and they proved that the torsion field, the toroidal field, which is that donut of energy that moves in all directions simultaneously at the same time with no beginning or no end, is the basis of all creation as we know it. That means that your heart and its natural energetic field operates in a torsion field. Your whole body operates in a torsion field. Anywhere from an apple to a carrot to an apricot to a plum to a rock to a tree to the entire planet, Earth, has an energetic field around it called a torsion field because that's where all form comes from. It's infinite. Energy cannot be created or destroyed. So foundation number one tells us that you sink to the environment that you're in. Right now, the reason why so much of the world is sick is because the environment that we're in is filled with incoherent and distorted fields of energy through certain technology that we use. It's not that the technology is bad. It's that we're using it in the wrong way. Electromagnetic fields aren't bad. You radiate them all day while you're awake and while you're asleep. What's bad is when you don't radiate or create things not in coherence with the laws of creation as we know it. That's when you start distorting fields. That's when you start messing this up. And that's when you start creating disease. So we need to come back to this torsion field once again. This technology is broken up into two parts. The black box behind it and if you're looking at it from the side, it would look like that. The screen in front of it. To create a torsion field is extremely important because if we can create that coherent field and then sit in that environment, you begin to sink to your birthright because your birthright is that toroidal field. You will sink back to coherency and therefore your body will take on coherency. So question number one is how do we create the torsion field? How does that actually work? So many of you have probably heard people call this scalar technology. Many of you have probably heard the term scalar technology, and most people use the word not actually knowing what it means. If we understand what it means in a simple way, it will not change the way that you catalyze your own healing process of yourself. It will change the way that you guys can explain it to others. So let's talk about that for a second. There's a spectrum. 
And we understand that energy cannot be created or destroyed. Therefore, there's an infinite spectrum with no beginning or end. But the way that we understand the spectrum, because of our so-called limitations of perception, is from zero to 186,000 miles per second. And 186,000 miles per second is your speed of light. From here to here is what we call reality, is what we call physical. Beyond the speed of light is what we call scalar. That's what scalar means. It's moving into the quantum field. Quantum is another word for nobody knows what the hell is going on. <laughs> That's what quantum means, okay? So quantum is basically saying we have no idea because it's everywhere all the time, at the same time, in every place instantaneously. We're going to call it quantum. We have no clue what's going on, okay? But scalar, your scalar field, is your field beyond the speed of light. We know that there's a field here, and we know that there's a field here, and when you take out the limitations of our perception, it's one field, it's not two separate things. So science-wise, they call this side of the field scalar, and they call this side of the field vector. They call this side of the spectrum in spiritual terms 5D, and they call this side of the spectrum 3D. They call this side of the spectrum non-physical, and they call this side of the spectrum material. It's all different words explaining the same thing in different terminology. Non-physical, physical, 5D, 3D, scalar, vector, non-Hertzian, Hertzian, it doesn't matter. It's all saying the same exact thing. Now here's the interesting part. When it comes to holistic health, even in the alternative health and holistic communities in the world today, we still forget about this part. So holistic health is taking everything here that you experience, which is extremely important. But true holistic health is taking everything into consideration and balancing everything on all parts. Not just the vector, the reality, the matrix, the physical, the material, the 3D part, but bridging the so-called gap because there is no gap. The gap is our illusion of separation between the two that's dictated by the limitations of our perception. You take this away, holistic health becomes an even bigger picture than we thought. So how do we balance everything on all planes, on all dimensions, on all levels, because we exist on all planes, on all dimensions, and on all levels? This part of the technology is your so-called engine field generator. What Dr. Sandra Rose Michael did was take a computer to recreate a coherent electromagnetic field and then use certain computers and specific alignments, which I'll explain in just a second, to access that field that we call the torsion field. How do we access the scalar field? How do we access the toroidal field, that infinite spectrum of energy, that infinite flow of energy, while using components within this field? And there's a way. And the answer of how to do that is very simple. So we're going to start with this part of the technology first, which is the black box behind the actual screen. The way that you access a torsion field, scientifically speaking, this is the only part you're actually going to have to memorize, but it's very easy, is two identical electromagnetic fields in perfect alignment and proximity. When you take two identical electromagnetic fields, the merging point will create a torsion field. That's how you tap into this part of the spectrum from this part of the spectrum. But that's just a two-point torsion field. What Dr. Sandra Rose Michael did was not reinvent the wheel, just build upon it. And she said, listen, why use two when we can use four? It'll be a whole lot more balanced. If you pay attention to this room, you see four different points where this technology is based. So with a four-point torsion field, with a four identical electromagnetic fields, you now have a much more stable torsion field. Now I'm going to explain this in a way that's very, very simple to understand without using the words electromagnetic field. When you have two cars, identical cars, if you were to take two identical cars, identical models, identical weight, identical acceleration, and identical precision when they hit each other, so long as everything is perfectly aligned and they weigh the same exact thing, or they're identical on both sides. When they hit, 
the cars will not move left or right. They will come to a perfect standstill. So long as you have that laser precision of the cars hitting each other and they're identical. Let's do that with water for a second and see what happens. These are hoses. Hose one and two. Identical width, identical water pressure, identical everything on both sides, precisely aligned as they hit each other. And here's what happens. When that water hits each other, so long as it's precisely aligned, you're going to have one stream of water going up and one stream of water going down. That's your two-point field. But when we add two more hoses, precisely aligned, perfect width, exact pressure, what happens over here is the water will hit itself, and now because you added another dimension, it will go up, down, left, and right. And if you remove the factor of gravity, because gravity impacts water, that water would actually turn into a torsion field. The reason why I say remove the factor of gravity is because that's what this technology is doing, only instead of with water, with light. Light is not impacted by the factor of gravity, because gravity can only impact matter, not light. So in the very center of this room, this technology is using the identical electromagnetic fields because the components of each one of these boxes are identical. They're precise, and they're creating coherent fields. You take coherent, identical electromagnetic fields, and you merge them with precise alignment, and every single one of these units are laser calibrated to a hundredth of an inch. It's as precise as you can get over here in our physical reality. Thus, rendering the merge point in the center of this room, creating a torsion field that goes out 2.2 miles. But now that you guys understand this, it's not 2.2 miles left and right. It's 2.2 miles left, right, up, and down. You're creating a sphere that has a 4.4 mile diameter, 2.2 miles in every direction, that this scalar field, which taps into the torsion field, is now impacting. So that's one part of how we balance the scalar portion of the experience of infinity, because that's really what we are. We're matter that's made up of energy that cannot be created or destroyed. So this is taking the holistic picture on that side, so-called that side of the spectrum. So some people will say, okay, so I could be two miles away from here, and I'll still get the same impacts. No. You're going to get the balance from this side, but that's not the point. The point is to balance both sides because that's what true holistic health is. Balancing all realms, all dimensions, all realities in every way that we know how to. So that brings us to the next part of the technology. And the next part of the technology is your monitor. It's your screen. What that's doing is using light within the spectrum, and I'll explain what that means in a second, to then impact you on the 3D level. Light within the spectrum, as we said, is zero to the speed of light, otherwise known as the speed of perception, 186,000 miles per second. Everything from here to here is what we call reality. That's where our bodies exist in as physical vessels. That's what your DNA exists in as something physical. That's what everything that we know ourselves as before you go into the spiritual level, before you go into the scalar, the 5D, and the non-physical exists as. So just like it's important to balance this, we need to balance this part as well. This spectrum, if you understand it, and by the way, another word for this spectrum is called the matrix, not something that you want to run away from, something that you want to master. If you understand the rules and the laws of the matrix, you become a master of it instead of a servant and a slave to it. So there are four parts that these screens are doing. Part number one, and I hope I spell it right, is called the Schumann's Resonance. The Schumann's Resonance, otherwise known as 7.83 hertz at a standard base, is the heartbeat of planet Earth. When everything is coherent and beautiful and perfect, you have that heartbeat that is life as we know it. The Schumann's resonance, when you bring it back into balance or transmit it to the body, because now we're operating within this realm, right? 
Once you transmit that to the body, it helps the body come back into its natural grounded healthy state. Just like standing on the earth and grounding with bare feet helps you because you're tuning back into the heartbeat of planet earth. It becomes a whole lot harder when that heartbeat is manipulated because of the things that we do. But the Schumann's resonance ultimately, no matter what we'll, we do, will always prevail sooner or later because that's the natural state of everything. So part of what's being transmitted through light within the spectrum through these monitors is that energy in the units of hertz. The Schumann's resonance, 7.83 hertz. Again, going back to foundation one. The environment that you're in is the environment that you sink to. Put yourself in an environment of 7.83 hertz and coherence with the Schumann's resonance and you will become in coherence with the Schumann's resonance once again. The second part of the technology, and I hope that I spell this right again, is called the Fibonacci sequence. And the Fibonacci sequence is a set of numbers and certain ratios from those numbers that we see in every part of creation as we know it. That set of numbers, if I remember correctly, is 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, 21, 44, and it keeps going. How do we know those numbers? Because when you take the last two and you add them up, you get to 5. When you take 3 plus 5, you get to 8. When you get 8 plus 5, you get to 13. When you get 13 plus 8, you get to 21. 21 plus 13 equals 44. Every single one of these numbers have a precise ratio to the number before it. And that ratio is called the golden mean, the golden ratio. Why is it an important set of numbers? Because these numbers are the exact order of how an embryo grows, how cells multiply, how flowers bloom according to fractal mathematics in the actual shape of their petals. Everything from beginning to end as we know it moves according to this set of numbers which means that this set of numbers is a certain code of creation. And whether we understand it or not, transmitting that natural code of creation through these numbers will transmit coherency once again because we know creation in its base is coherent. It's a torsion field, it's a toroidal field. Tap back into coherency, become coherent once again because that's what Foundation One shows us. So the movement that you're seeing both speed and sometimes some go up and some go down are all in alignment in the unit of seconds with the Fibonacci sequence. So when that whole program starts over again, you'll see the screen go up for one second, down for two, up for three, down for five, up for eight, down for 13, up for 21, down for 44, and it keeps going until the program keeps looping itself in that Fibonacci sequence of the golden mean and the golden ratio, thus transmitting those codes of creation to each and every one of us. The third part is technically called photonic collision. Photonic is just another word for light, so I'm going to use the word light. Collision of light. What is this? Well, the screens are perfectly aligned. And the screens have light coming off of them, otherwise called photons. It's just another word for light. When you take that light and precisely align it, and you hit those photons, those quantums of light, those pieces of light against each other, in the precise center of the room, where this torsion field is, you have an implosion. And that implosion of light creates a charge. And that charge is how your cells are charged in this environment. Because that charge is between 70 to 90 millivolts. And based on what we said, back to the most important foundation of foundation number one with the environment. If you're sitting in an environment that's charged between 70 to 90 millivolts, if your cells are at 30 or 35, over a period of time, you're going to sink right to that. Because the purpose of everything in environments is to remain in balance. So naturally, just like if you were to take hot water and put it into a cold cup, the cold cup will start heating up until the water and the cup come back into balance. The only difference is that you can't change the charge of the 70 to the 90 millivolts because that's what it is objectively. So your body and your cells will have no choice but to come back into coherence with that because that's what nature is always trying to do.
So photonic collision, the collision of light, is creating the charge, 70 to 90 millivolts, that you sink to, thus rendering literally a cellular charger for your body, which brings you back into or helps your body get back into a state of health once again. And the fourth part of this whole thing is color. So what is color? Color is the fourth of many components of how this works, but I'm breaking it down to the foundations. When you look at these screens, you're seeing color, and the normal person says, what do you mean? It's just color. You can't do anything with that. But when we understand what color actually is, we can actually use color as a healing modality. We know that even in now the Western medical establishment, they're starting to use color therapy because they have no choice. You're proving it through studies of using color to heal certain parts of the body. How does that work and why does that work? And here's the science behind it. Let's go back to our spectrum from zero to the speed of light. This is reality as we know it. Within this spectrum, we experience everything that we experience within our day-to-day -day lives. There's another spectrum based on units called nanometers. Nanometers is the wavelength of something. So 360 nanometers to 720 nanometers is your spectrum of light. Some people say it's 400 to 700. The technicality is 360 to 720. So red is just energy that's expressed in 360 nanometer wavelength that we perceive as red. Then you get orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet, and that's your rainbow. Your rainbow is just based on the so-called limitations of our perception with our eyeballs of what we see from energy that we perceive as red to energy that we perceive as violet or purple, just to make it simple. The point of what I'm trying to make over here is that this is just a spectrum of energy. The difference between red and purple is a wavelength. It's a frequency, it's an energy, it's a vibration. So once you understand that, let's take it a step further. And the step further is those diagrams of people sitting like this with those seven chakra points. That's a very old map of medicine that we now use for entertainment purposes around the world. But that's extremely advanced in terms of what they found out there. Because it just so happens to be that there's also seven energy centers, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. Now in the Western medical field, they'll call your solar plexus your digestive system. In the Western medical field, they'll call your green chakra, your heart chakra, your cardiovascular system and your pulmonary system. They'll call the blue chakra or the throat chakra your thyroid system and so on and so forth, your communication, your throat. But what they figured out back then was the optimal frequency and energy that each organ in the body works at. So the optimal frequency or energy of the digestive system is the energy that we perceive as yellow. The optimal frequency of the reproductive system is the energy that we experience as red. The optimal frequency of the cardiovascular system and pulmonary system is the energy that we perceive as green within the confines of this reality and how perception works. So here's where it brings you to, and what I'm about to say next is a fact. You can look this up. Yellow foods that come from planet Earth in its whole form are good to help rebalance digestive problems. Green foods are good for clearing phlegm in your lungs, and they're good for helping heal your heart and rebalance it. Red foods are good for inflammation. They're good for the physical body as we know it in its actual form. It's good for blood. It's good for a lot of things when it comes to the actual root chakra and what that is in accordance with. So now what is the primary function of DNA? And the primary function of DNA is the storage of light. The light that you give it is the light that it will take and then shoot that energy to the proper parts of your body. And I'm simplifying the, the mechanics over here to make it understandable. 
So just like when you eat the yellow food, it takes that food and shoots it to the proper part of the body to rebalance and bring the digestive system back into its optimal state. Those would be bananas, lemons in your water, uh, mango, pineapple, and so on and so forth. That will actually also help with energies like depression because depression is also an energy. And they found out a long time ago that depression is stored in this part of your body. So you rebalance this part of your body through the tools that we now know that we have you can actually overcome things like depression by thinking in terms of energy, frequency, and vibration like Nikola Tesla told us to. So when it comes to the systems itself, what are you looking at? You're looking at color. You're basically looking at a rainbow mixed with other components, with a Schumann's resonance, with a Fibonacci sequence, with the collision of light. But what you're looking at over here is light being transmitted to each and every one of us and the DNA doing what it's here to do, the storage of light. It stores that coherent light, and then it takes that light and shoots it to the proper part of the body to rebalance that part of the body from red to orange to yellow to green to blue to indigo to violet, because this is the spectrum that your body actually exists in as a physical body. So when you take all of these four components, let's go back to the beginning of what was said. The beginning of what was said was taking the overall spectrum and the overall spectrum of infinity, because there is no beginning and no end, is zero to infinity. Technically infinity to infinity, but we'll keep it simple. Zero to infinity and our perception and the limitations of that perception caused us to believe that this is the end, 186,000 miles per second. Now we're coming to understand through things like quantum entanglement that completely supersede and surpass the speed of light that there's something a whole lot bigger. We've already known that for a long time, but it's only taken now for science to finally start accepting that, and they're doing it slowly because it breaks everything that they thought. This is 3D. This is 5D. This is physical. This is spiritual. This is scalar. And this is vector, as we know. This part of the technology, the black box, balances this part of the spectrum. And this part of the technology, the monitor, balances this part of the spectrum. And now, from our first thought of what holistic health was, which was from zero to the speed of light, is now true holistic health from infinity to infinity. That's how you balance the body big picture, not by giving in to the limitations of our perception, saying, okay, it ends here, but by understanding that there's something bigger and then balancing things in all dimensions to the best of our ability. This creates your torsion field. This creates balance within the spectrum of light that we experience. And when you balance both and you create that environment, both physically and non-physically, both material and spiritual, both 5D and 3D, both physical and non-physical, what you're doing is very simple. You're creating a balanced environment over there, and you're creating a balanced environment over here, thus rendering a balanced environment everywhere, which brings us back to foundation one. You sync with the environment that you're in. And if you have a balanced environment, big picture from beginning to end, your body will sink to that. Your body will always do its best to heal itself. And if you give it the proper environment to do just that, health is going to be the result, not disease. So that's the somewhat simple form of how the breakdown of the energy enhancement system technology works with the first five foundations, what this part is, what this part is, and how it balances all environments to create health as we know it.